I've been told so many times that I am such a strong black yes, man. Yes, me too. I'm such a strong black woman. I, I can't wait for the day somebody says, you're such a strong white woman. <laughs> I've never, I've never heard that. anyone saying, oh, what never, a strong that, white I've man. Never heard that. And never. honestly, I want to do away with that term, strong white, no. or strong black woman, because it gives you no room to be anything else but strong. Welcome back to the Black Corner. I am Lesokho van Niekerk, and I'm here with my co-host, Susi Somkosana. We're so excited to be sitting here again and talking to you. Today is an exciting one. Yeah. We are going to air it. It's laundry day. Oh yes, we've yeah. got all the receipts today, and I'm so excited. We're talking about something that gets to me. What makes you tick? Yeah, and it's the small things, you know, that yeah. makes you tick. Let's actually play a little game. Okay. Let's just bounce it off each other and... Give me like four things that really make you want to scream. Okay, the first thing for me is white crocodile tears. I can't do it. Mm. I don't mean it in a bad way. <laughs> but the trouble is, our counterparts usually use tears to get them what they need. And for me, what I find is when you use tears against me, you're actually villainizing exactly. me. and You're making me feel bad for whatever it is that you're crying for. I'll tell you something. The other day, I actually had a phone call. I was, deal I was managing white tears again. And what had happened was the person phoned me to apologize for offending me for something. Yet they were crying uh. on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't understand how you can phone me to apologize for an offense that you made on me, but I am consoling you. Okay. And it's quite weird because that, like, if, if that was happening in person and say now I'm walking into the situation and said person is yes. crying and you're what just standing there, you? you look like you've done something <laughs> to you. What did she do to you? I'm a villain. You know, mine is the G word. Ooh. Be grateful. It grates me. Do you know, when you tell me as a white person to be grateful, firstly, I feel like you are limiting my experience yes. to just positive emotions so you're not giving me you're not allowing me the range of emotions that a normal human being goes through you're Imagine, saying i should just take what i get yeah and i should be i should be that i you know i should be thank god someone gave me something because mm. to be grateful someone must have given you something mm. you know mm. and for me my position in the industry or wherever i find myself is never one to be grateful for because <laughs> i fight for where i i fought to be there you know <laughs> yes. and yet you must be grateful and yet i must be grateful and it really you know the other thing i really really can't stand is the black girl hair talk i don't want to discuss my hair at all I don't want, I, I don't do it. I don't do it. I don't know why I need to come into a room and my hair needs to be a topic of conversation. Or if I'm in a lineup of 10 girls and I happen to be the only person of color and they jump from one straight <laughs> to 10 just to discuss her hair. Do you remember one time we, I, we, were, we were on tour? Actually, mm -hmm. we happened to be on tour together mm -hmm. and I got on the bus and I happened to be wearing a fabulous wig and my wig was a conversation I mean, I for all 20 something people on the bus. But then there was one day where I happened to change my wig and somebody took it upon themselves to announce for everybody else that I had changed my wig and I was wearing a different wig. So here we were again discussing the Soho's hair. And I mean, I remember, publicly. I remember that I was, I was in that bus, one of very few people of color on that tour. <laughs> and I remember watching the entire thing unfold and being quite scared yeah, and painful. shocked that you are standing. I, I, I almost felt like I needed to save you from something. But, you know, it was more shock than anything. Yeah. And I think my third one would be the assumption of strength when it comes to a black man. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it's assumed that I'm strong mm -hmm. in, 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 all, in all areas, you know. Um, especially when it comes to, you know, when we do the show, we, we, in, in the shows we do, they're quite physical, so we get hurt. Mm -hmm. And I've been injured many times and I felt that, you know, the company or whoever is in charge has... Not like I felt like I wasn't believed almost. Mm. I felt like I had to really go the extra mile just to prove my injury. 
I have been told so many times that I am such a strong black yes, man. Yes, me too. I'm such a strong black woman. I, I, I can't wait for the day somebody says, you're such a strong white woman. I've never, <laughs> I've never, I've never heard, heard anyone say, oh, what a strong white man. I've never man. heard that. And never. honestly, I want to do away with that term, strong white, no. uh, strong black woman, because it gives you no room to be anything else but strong. And it, 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 may, it, it, it gives the assumption that you can, you can withstand things, that you can, you can handle burden and Absolutely. you know that you're strong enough and it's terrible yeah and my last one definitely is the comparison of people of color mm. i feel like we we come into the industry and we don't have a we don't have space to be ourselves mm. the minute you walk into the industry you remind somebody of somebody that has come before the minute you're of age in the industry there's somebody new that's coming up and she's the new lesejo you oh, know you remind, you remind me so much of, of lesejo it's too much can you just allow beginning to be herself I mean, <laughs> and mine, my last one would be my name. And it's simple. C, Bu, C, So. It's not hard. Just say it. Everyone should be able to say that. You'd be so surprised to tell. And the thing is, for me, if I learn your name mm -hmm. and your surname, and these names and surnames are sometimes hard. I mean, Afrikaans is not our home language. But I learn it and I say it properly. Look, people can say Tchaikovsky. You know, so why can't you say Sibu? They can say Ronde Jam and everything else. Exactly. But Sibu, Siso is very hard. Really? Not really. So today's topic is one of what makes you tick. And we want to hear from you through our hashtag, The Black Corner. And coming up, we have a video insert from one of our artistic friends who is going to tell us what makes her tick. Hello, everybody. But I'm fondly known as Ute Adams. I am a television personality, host, MC, so go away to have been on sets, particularly this one. And so he is like but I had an not an altercation, a back and forth with a makeup artist. See, I bought a banana foundation. I figured it up. And I raised that concern and apparently it oxidizes. See if I get by to get one no man, this is not working for me. Can we please find an alternative to this particular foundation? Organic is that make it any foundation that will oxidize and fit my skin tone. I was told that I'm being very difficult. At that particular moment, that's something that as a young person in the entertainment industry, you don't want to hear. Those are words you don't want to hear because that's how easy to start and be wrong. Those things should not be normalized. You know, to be dismissed. In, on sets, um, in the makeup room, in wardrobe rooms, because you are made to feel like your concerns are difficult. You know, the makeup artist who happens to be a white lady, me needing a foundation shade that matches mine is being difficult. Imagine having an altercation such as that about something that may seem so petty before having to go on screen to perform or go on a shoot to smile and take pictures. That's not nice. You know what I mean? And this is just on a small scale. This is just my personal experience. And I haven't touched other people's experiences, other women's experiences, other black women of darker shade than me who find it difficult to find a shade for themselves. We make up boutiques. And I can't also imagine about the women who were here before us as the, you know, the newbies of the industry. I can't imagine what they had to go through because the range of makeup back then did not even cater for black women, you know? Um, so yeah, this is just for me to say, hey man, I command, I command, it's not nice to be dismissed. It's not nice to not be seen, to be heard. It's not nice to not be catered for because we're all working towards, you know, the success of that particular production or success of the company. So let's work together as a freaking team. whatever. That's not the chat right now, you know. The chat is, I'm a black woman. You know, there are other black women and black men in different productions. And if you in your uh, department you know who you work with, make sure that those people are taken care of. Thank you for that contribution. 
So you can keep the conversation going by answering our question of the week, what makes you tick? So today we have an amazing lineup of guests. We've got dancer and performer Epeleng Merape. We also have actor, singer, and vocal coach Kurt Haupt. But first we are sitting down with Epeleng, who also happens to be a very close friend of mine. Hello, Ip. Epeleng. Hi, Hi guys. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. Welcome to the Black Corner. Thanks. So today we're talking about um, hectic things. We're talking about things that we deal with on a daily basis that, that, that make us tick. And uh, I mean, you, you've existed in a, in a world that was really not created for, for black people. You are a ballet dancer, you study ballet, and that's basically a world that's created for, for white people. So what's, what's your everyday reality in, in existing in a world that is not made for you? Um, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult. Um, <laughs> it's a tricky one. It's tricky. <laughs> pretty tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've experienced some pretty um, traumatic things. Um, they're minor things, but they build up over time and they're pretty traumatic as they go through. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's quite a space to navigate and to validate yourself and to move with confidence and without being shaken um, because of the color of your skin. Yeah. I mean, in one of our earlier episodes, I, I spoke to Sibu about, I shared, um, I shared my earliest memory of systemic racism and I shared, a, I'll share it very quickly with you. I'm sure I've told it to you before, but um, as a young dance and training, 15 years old um, in art school, high school, and I had to make the decision, ballet or jazz. And I remember sitting in that office and having to make that decision and the trauma and the, the burden of the everyday things of, of, of me having to stand up for my blackness. It all just came gushing into my memory. And in that, in that moment, I decided I actually, I can't go this route because it's going to be a constant battle. So you, you stuck it out. Yeah, the passion pushed me through somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it has to be. Um, as someone, because I also went to university to study ballet and major in ballet. And um, yeah. had a few of these conversations with you as well on the, you know, the body shaming struggles and how as a person of color, you are just always trying to attain this physical image that is just unattainable because, I mean, African body. <laughs> um, what do you... We're thick and juicy. I mean, <laughs> what do you think are the, um, are the real negative effects of body shaming, in, in, specifically in the dance industry? I mean, it definitely breeds um, adults to have a sort of self-hate and that's lasting and that that filters off into other parts of people's lives which is really difficult you know mm. um it's a deep rooted like issue that self hate to have mm. not accepting who you, who you are and the skin you live in no. i mean do you have any like very specific memories that you'd like to share where you 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 went away from a situation and you you just did not feel great about your body because of something that someone had said to you <laughs> I often used to get when I was much younger the um, put that bum away put that bum away anyone who knows me knows I've got a booty for someone my size <laughs> yeah. I love my booty but um, yeah it used, to, it used to bug me I used to be like uh, what can I eat less of or what can I change about myself to make this better um, because yeah. being less like me was better um, so yeah that was oh. a difficult one thing to navigate you know, the bum thing is quite a thing because I've been kicked out of a ballet class because I stuck up for my friend who had quite large buttocks, but that's her body and a beautiful body. And the thing about being a person of color in ballet is they constantly tell us how our big bums and whatever are, are hindering our, our, our execution, our execution of, movement, of right? the movement. So mm. for those of you who are watching at home and you know what a derriere is or, 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 or an arabesque, an arabesque. basically sending your leg behind you, mm. you know, and we are told that because of our big bums, it's hindering our leg going behind us. <laughs> so this particular friend of mine, she had, um, she had a bum. She was curvy, thick and juicy. And every single day our ballet master was at it with her. And I think I got to a day where I just, I just couldn't. And I was like, hi, sorry, <laughs> it's not her fault. Can you lay off? And he kicked me out for that, you know? So it's, 
it's it, a it's, 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 a, it's a thing, and I mean, I've, I've, it's, it, and it's not a, it, it's, it's a person of color on the all round thing. Mm. And uh, <laughs> it's very dangerous because people start doing terrible things to keep themselves in that aesthetic, you know. <clears throat> I think Ipiling, yeah. yeah, you and I have actually had a conversation where we said that part of the reason why we are able to float in the in the spaces that we float in is because to a large degree we fit a certain aesthetic, you know. Um, we do come in a certain physique and our facial features are a certain way and we find that we have an easier time navigating ourselves in the world because of the way that we look. And it's it's unfair because some of our friends don't look the way that we look and we see their struggles. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I've definitely encountered that and it comes with that, um, yeah, it's so tricky, that comment. Um, you look, I mean, you dance well and you look good for a black girl, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. For a black person, you, you fit into that. So it's such a difficult thing because there's not not all of our friends fit into it for a black girl, you know. So Ipeleng, I mean, our topic for today and our question for our audience today is what makes you tick. So besides the body pressures and everything, what actually what what gets to you? Um, I would say things like small little comments like, um, "Wow, you actually speak so well," or. <laughs> um, Another one is, oh, you have such a cute nose for a black girl. Or, um, yeah, small little comments like that that just layer on and layer on and eventually it's just like... Yeah. I've, I mean, yeah. those those little comments I've heard too often. Um, you're lucky you don't have big bums and thighs. Oh. I don't know. I don't know if that's a compliment. That's not, that's not a compliment. That's, that's not, not lucky. lucky because you live in, you look around in your family and women that's who, who are we black are. and who look the way that you have been told you're lucky not to look like. Yeah, so, I've heard that one too many times. I just have a question. What advice would you give a young Ipeleng? If you look back to young Ipeleng and you've now had this journey and gone through everything you've gone through, what would you say to her? Um, I would say uh, don't be afraid to voice when things make you feel uncomfortable. Um, it doesn't have to be a war. It's just about saying, I'm sorry, but that really makes me feel uncomfortable and voicing that and really try and focus on your passion. That's what gets you through. Keep working hard on the thing that you love most because that can really throw you off track. So, yeah. yeah, it can. And, you know, I actually wanted to touch on being in that world of, of ballet, you often, because it's not for us, it's not created for us, um, you almost, as a person of color, you have to go out of your way to find it. And that breeds tokenism and lack of representation. And it, the kind of pressure that can put on you, can you maybe speak on something like that as being somebody of color that's existing in this world by yourself? Yeah, um, there's a certain insecurity that can fester in you and that you question why you were employed especially in those spaces. Um, it can be quite um, nerve-wracking because you feel, you, you can often feel like you um, sort of use this like sometimes. So you worry that you're, you're employed or put forward for the window dressing and for your skill and talent. Yeah. Um, so that can put you in quite a strange place psychologically, but um, yeah, I guess it's about just being ahead of the game and just working so that that can't be an option, but that you have to do employed for your talent and your skill. And do you find that more is expected of you because you're the the black person? Um, I've just something about like the eyes are on me to see is she really that good or is it because she's yeah. black? You know, so um, um, that's, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Wow. That was very insightful, Ips, and thank you for taking the time to chat with us. We'll see you soon-ish. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me. And now we're going to hear more from you at home on what you think and what really makes you tick. I remember a time, this was now during a ballet class, um, during my formative years of training, where I was standing at the bar and I was standing in fifth position. And my teacher calls me and she says, Julio, this isn't an African dance class. You're gonna have to turn out more. And after an uncomfortable chuckle, I attempt to do so without altering my posture or without distorting my posture. And she keeps saying more, more. And she walks over to me, she places her hand on my thigh and she 
she proceeds to turn out my thighs and she says to me, I want to see the inside of your thigh. Turn out, turn out, turn out. And I'm trying, I'm trying, but to no avail. Then she turns to me and she says, it's your thighs. They're too big. That was only one of numerous incidents where I received remarks on my body, my physical appearance, and how it serves as a hindrance to the development of my technique. I developed a fixation. I would catch myself staring at my buttocks, staring at my thighs in the mirror sometimes, just being like, how, what can I do? What can I do to make my behind less prominent? What can I do to um, make my thighs smaller? It pains me because I know I'm not the only one that went through something like that. Because those remarks were made very lightly with, with no, she didn't think twice. More of what makes you tick. Continue to drive the conversation on our social media um, platforms using the hashtag the black corner. So we're going to bring in a uh, vocal coach, singer, actor, Kurt Hopped into the conversation. Hello, Kurt. Hey. Hi, y'all. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Black Corner. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. It's lovely to do this on, on this platform. However, we have to tell our audience at home that this is not the first time the three of us do this like this. No. So <laughs> no, we, We've had many a conversation <laughs> about these kinds of things. Absolutely. Sure. And as you've said, many a conversation. I have one very vivid memory where... Something happened to me in a show we did together and I felt like something was unfair because it was. And I remember your advice to me. You said, take it, with, take it up your chin. This is how it's going to be. There are different rules when it comes to us. And that's always stuck with me because I felt like I can't accept that. Even though, I mean, coming from you, I'm not saying you're old, but you've had... No, you've had <laughs> Let's call a spade a spade. Let's call it one. Call it ping a ping, people. You've had a few years in this industry, and you, you, I, I can imagine if I, if I have all the experiences I have, I can times it by a lot to come to you. So, um, what do you think are the real burdens on people of color in our industry? Look, I think it starts at the audition. Is the most is 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 the most thing is, is trying to get that job first. Um, and I know when, when I was, when I was just starting out, when you arrive at that, that first audition as a person of color, um, you know, you have to out sing every white body in that queue Wow! for them to even consider you, you know, that yeah. you, 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 you are already at a disadvantage because every, every, the romantic lead is going to be played by a white boy. Mm. That's just mm. that's just a, a, a standard. So so you are have to sing your your sing the pants off everybody to get into the ensemble. Wow! And oh. that is that <laughs> <laughs> just to get just to be in the back. Just to be at the back. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, you understand that 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 is that is what that is what it was because you 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 firstly you you had to you had to get get the job and you had to be grateful that you got the job you know so wherever they put you you had to you had to constantly be like okay yes yes i'm, I'm just be happy that i'm here happy that i'm here yeah. but um you 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 kind of deal with it and you know you 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 have to i think what every what every person of color what we do because we we, we eventually how we how we how we how we deal with it is we know we play to our strengths so we're going to find make friends with everybody who's going to make to help us along because we know that nobody else is going to help us yeah. along so you make you, you you go to the other groups you gravitate to the crew you gravitate to the yeah. wardrobe you gravitate to everybody that's going to help you because they're the ones that are going to help you yeah. um uh, because no one there's no one no one else helps you so in in that way that that i think is 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 
is an important thing is learning to cope to get a thick skin and to kind of understand that the chances of getting into the front row is really difficult mm. until they they do something like the color purple or ragtime um <laughs> or anything else where where, where there is a, a cast or a, a type yeah. written for um black face a need for poc oh, wow i mean would you would you say that as um, I mean, as we've already discussed, it's you, you work your ass off just to get into the ensemble. And um, do you think then that the, the, the journey that I have to go through, say, let's use me, to get into that ensemble, do you th what's, the, what's the chance of me actually getting that lead, in your opinion? You see, um, it's, it's you, you. You should get that lead. I mean, I think we were we we, we did have a we did have a have a, have a discussion um, along the lines where you were where you were just overlooked for 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 an understudy. Yeah, and I mean that is the natural the, the natural progression for a performer uh, for a young performer is you coming into the ensemble, then you got to get onto the cover track. Mm -hmm. You know that if you if you are you 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 want to be given given granted the opportunity to 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 do a cover yeah. um and and even though you did you did show that you you, you could handle the cover work with a, with a bit of training but that is the whole point of being the cover yeah. is that you you want to you want to expand the performer's skills at the end of the day um they just overlooked you and doesn't then that come back to the whole thing of be grateful just be grateful you're here yeah, yeah. just be grateful i mean yeah. tell us how you really feel about the g word grateful Oh, no, it drives me completely insane because the only person, people that I need to be grateful for are my parents. Mm. You know, and, <laughs> and to God, uh, you know, the rest of it is me. Um, you, you know, we, yeah. we, we get up in the morning, we, you, you train, you know you've got to take care of yourself, you know what, you, what, 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 what skills you, you've got to do. And at the end of the day, they employed you. Mm. Yeah. So like, like every, every other person that that it's 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 employment and you employed me because i'm i'm able to do the job um so therefore you should be grateful not me you know <laughs> do you understand that yeah. that's, there you, you should be grateful that i am skilled and that 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 you can use the skill that i bring to this table um and 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 not the fact that that i should be grateful for the, that that i should be grateful for the job and forever be in humility and and eyes cast downwards no we've moved past that mm. yeah. you know yeah. we, we we all we, we you you all have a contribution to make and i think it buys into um a sense of 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 kinding us keeping us in with keeping that inferiority complex alive mm. you know um the one that 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 you are are that you grow up with. I mean, if, if you come from, I mean, I, I have this conversation with my mother a lot, you know, coming, growing up, having grown up in apartheid and then um, post 94 growing up and living in this, 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 this kind of era. Um, it is very difficult to get rid of the inferiority complex that, that, that you are never, you, when, when you are in your formative years, you were never seen as good enough. So this, this constant need to the rest of your life is, am I good enough? Am I good enough? I need to be. I need to do this to be good enough because I'm never going to be good enough because I'm not white. I'm never going to be good enough because you know that that yeah. that it, it is kind of ingrained to you if 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 you if you grow grew up the way the way people of my age did grow up in this country. Yeah. You know that yeah. that it's 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 this constant inferiority complex that you can't get rid of because it's in the DNA of my DNA of my parents and my and their parents. You know, it's it's something that 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 was intrinsically um yeah ingrained it's instilled in you, in you. Okay, yeah. and i mean speaking of the the g word and speaking of inferiority complex i think you've informally shared a bit of a story about your schooling career as a young boy something that happened and you were placed into a school and i think you mentioned it in passing you know that i think uh, i as i said i grew up in the 80s so i was part of the the let's let's call it the <laughs> Well, that's a big experiment. You wouldn't say they call it the experiment, no. but I was I was 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 lucky enough to go to a model C school. Strangely, um, what got me into the school was the fact that I was a pianist, so or that that, that I was that I was musically inclined, musically gifted. Mm. You know that, that I was that that was my my skill and my headmaster 
to go come to the school. But um, it's, you know, that it's weird that, that, that only in my final, final, final exam, practical exam, did I beat the girl in my class. <laughs> that, you know, the, 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 she, was, she was always placed first in practical exams, always. You know, the, the, no matter how hard I worked, no matter how well I played at the school, I never, never, never got, uh, got the highest mark until we got an external examiner in my, in my final exam, and then I beat her. That reminds me of a story of my own that I kind of had forgotten about. I was in matric doing my final year, and in my Spanish dance exam, I took it of mm. the whole grade. It was me. I was the winner. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, came the performances on the gala night, and you know how we do it. We've got two people that'll share a lead, and you, you alternate. But the gala night, the opening night, the big night. Mm. Now, if I was number one, who then who should, should perform? Do it? No, I was. It was. It was snatched right out of my hands, and I had to watch my my rival, my white rival, take my place in essence, just because that's that's how it had been done before. And I guess I don't know if they never had a a black Spanish fabulous you know, person. And it becomes quite hard when you when when, when it's things like that, like schooling and marks. It was and very painful. Things like that because. I just remembered uh, that this is this is this is the this is the the biggest I think. In hindsight, you know, in hindsight, the, the biggest thing about, about high school, you know, in your yearbook, you always get given this, there's a caption under your, your photograph. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, we had, we had, well, in our, our time, <laughs> we had the yearbook, and, and the, in, the, in, in there were the photographs of each matriculant. And underneath there was, was, was a caption. You had, you had a caption. Um, they chose a caption for you, though, whoever, compiled the magazine oh. and my caption was and my mother was very upset and now i realize why my mother was upset but my caption was skirt so, so for all intents and purposes they, they had added an s to my name and called and and for history under my photograph is skirt because that is what the the one of the teachers called me was my name that the drama teacher called me skirt throughout my throughout my high school career. Mm. Wow. And I mean what, what what was the what was the connection to that? What's the reasoning? Yeah, what was the reason? I think because clearly they thought I was gay. But I mean I didn't even know I was gay when I was <laughs> in high school. I could, I only even realized it post high school. I mean, it could, I mean, when I was in high school, being homosexual was illegal. Mm. Um, so, you know, so, but yeah, it, it comes it, back that my nickname language. through high school was Skirt, which I, which now in hindsight, I realized I should have been more upset about, but you weren't because you kind of just had to laugh and... You were grateful. You don't have time to be upset when you're yes, grateful. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have this wonderful school in this wonderful white space, in the school of a thousand, and there's 53 of you. 50, 52 other people that look like you wow. um, and you you, you kind of you, you have to to deal with it and you you keep your head down and you you do it skirt also sounds to me like the disrespect of your name which which is something yes. that Sibu brought up yeah. earlier yes. why why no. can you not say my name why do you feel the need to add something to my name that does not belong there yeah, that's just, and I mean your name. Your name is you. Your name is your identity, and yeah. that, that's who you identify yourself it actually as. Actually, diminishes you. Yeah, it actually so diminishes. The, the the worst kind of disrespect for me is when you disrespect who I am, like my innate being, and that's what I feel like is happening when you are messing with my name. And Kurt's one for me just sounds so much deeper because Kurt, it's a, it's a Caucasian name. Let's let's call a thing a thing. It's a Caucasian name, so there shouldn't be anything difficult about saying Kurt. You're choosing to not say my name. You're choosing to diminish me. Yeah, you know? Skirt. Yes. And I'm sure there were other skirts in the school. You couldn't have been the only skirt, right? But yeah, she yeah. chose that you are going to be that. Yeah. So I actually just want to bring Ippeling into mm. this one. Um, I want to talk about double standards. Being a person of color and a non-person of color. I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. I think the thing that irks me the most, for instance, is if I open my mouth, I'm labeled as aggressive mad <laughs> why are you mad though <laughs> you know? and, and if stacy opens her mouth she's just concerned she really just wants to get something off her chest mm. so kurt what are some of the the double standards that make you tick 
well, there you. I mean, that is that is that is the most important one in my world. I mean, is is the fact that when you when you open your mouth, you are labeled a troublemaker. Yeah. Um, and for the most part, all you're trying to do is just to stand stand up for yourself and to just let people know how they, how, how they how you should be treated. Um, and it's because um, there's, I mean, there's there. I mean, there are, there are, there are various there are various incidents. Well, not various, but I mean, there are, there are two big incidents that I mean that 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 in my career that have that have really um, had an impact on this. Troublemaker. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. when you when I open my mouth to address something, um, not in first. Yes, I did once in an aggressive way, but then in a non-aggressive way, I had people storm out of my dressing room just because I'm trying to address an issue, mm -hmm. and then past that, then not speaking to me for a month, you know, or avoiding me and can't make I can't take with me, not because of anything, but just I didn't like the the tone or. The, the the way they handle something as a person of color, I'm just letting you know that don't behave in that way. Mm -hmm. It's taken up that you are blown up into out of proportion and you are seen as someone that's constantly just making trouble and and is oversensitive. Yeah. Wow. I mean Ips, what 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 would be the double standards that just make you want to scream? <laughs> um there's little things like words that are said in jest, like um I can be late for a reasonable thing and it'll be oh African time yeah. or yeah. small things that are like that that are said in jest that really it's just not fair. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for me it's something similar. It's it's the coding for me. It's that if Ipeleng does something, I go, they are like that. Yeah. That's what they do. But then Susan does the same thing. And it's Susan. It's just Susan. You know, when Susan does it, Susan did this. But if Ipe Leng does it, it's, yeah, they do that. They are like that. And I just, who's they? It's all of us, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. To, yeah. To, they used to be. Yeah. To do that. that that's the other thing. It's be, being being the only person of, of only one of like, we were what, one of six. Um, and you represent the 40 million that, that still have to have to walk this path. Yeah. And whatever you do is, 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 is seen as whatever the, the other people behind you is going to do. Yeah. yeah. Like your yeah. behavior isn't unique to you. Yeah. Your behavior is all colored people are like this. All black people are like this. Whereas with, with, with Stacy and Chad, it isn't, you know, it's just Stacy and Chad. And that, that's where, 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 where it is. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just, just double. I think, and I, I just believe that double stand, I think double standards are intentional and that's why I struggle with them so much. I don't, I struggle to believe that they can be unintentional. I struggle to believe that it's just something you do in passing or without, you know, thought. Because if you are, if you, if you, if you're gonna turn around and say, "Yeah, African time," that's something you've said before, and that's something you've discussed before, you know. Yes. And for me, it just all seems yes. very intentional. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the African time thing, it gets me because if Stacy walks in and she's late, she's African what also. Happened? Stacy's also African. Yes, she I is mean, African. Stacy <laughs> wants to be seen as African. So why is it that when Stacy walks in, it's not African time? It's not African time. time. She, she, they, she had a problem. Yeah. Something must have happened you along know. the way for her to be late. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> problem at, yeah. But you know, Ips, I mean, now we've got the, the new ballet shoes. Black people are incorporated. Took took a bit too long, a few years too, too long. That's a double standard. Yeah, yeah. That's a double standard because <laughs> or something like that. And our first pair of uh, brown ballet shoes were manufactured in 2018, I think. And for years before that, you then had to paint your own shoes. Mm. While everybody else is yeah. warming up and getting ready for the show, you're so panicked about your pink shoe that you have to turn into a brown shoe. You're not even focusing on the, on your, on what you're supposed to be doing. And Stacy's over there in a vast split. She's ready. Mm. She's ready for the show, and you are painting your shoe. And I mean, it's I've I once hurt myself, and I had to, they had to put that tape around me, and um, the doctor said. Um, I'm going to use a flesh color so that because we, he knew I was a performer because of the nature of my injury it was a stage injury. And the doctor says, I'm going to use a flesh colored one so that it's concealable on stage. And I remember sitting there and thinking flesh colored. 
And I was quite excited to see what he was going to provide because <laughs> he went away to come back with this tape. <laughs> and he came back with this tape. And true as day, it was flesh colored. But it was not my flesh. It wasn't your flesh, Daddy. <laughs> it, was, it was not my flesh. And now I had to repaint this thing. It I was to Carl's paint. flesh. You know, it was it was Susan. <laughs> it wasn't my flesh. Yeah. So I had to now paint this thing. And I remember the process of me putting makeup on that band. I was thinking, it is so weird that they think that there's one universal flesh color. Yeah. And it happens to be the one that is not my flesh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, what, 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 what's interesting for me is that y'all had to deal with it yourselves. Like you had to, had to, had to sort that problem out. That it, it was your responsibility to sort that problem yeah. out. You know, yeah. that, that it, 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 it's, it's never, Stacey doesn't have to, to sort it out. You know, even if yeah. all Stacey's problems get sorted out for her, but your shoes, you have to sort out yourself. Absolutely. I mean, I think you know, the conversation... Till today, most, most, most of the time, if we have issues, costume, costuming issues, we have to sort it out ourselves. No, absolutely. You know, no, that you have to deal with it your, your, yourself. Costume, hair, makeup, yeah. shoes. You know, I think the whole, the, the double standard conversation, we could, we could go on and on about it yeah. because it really is a never-ending thing. You know, Kurt and, and Ipiling, thank you so much for coming forward and sharing some of the things that make you tick as people of color and we're going to turn it back to a video link where we hear more about body pressures and double standards in the entertainment industry body shaming towards people of color particularly in the entertainment industry is indeed something that is very serious and something that i feel um, needs to be challenged quite vigorously because first of all we did not create ourselves uh we can't and I feel like it is therefore unfair to constantly be compared to other bodies when our body structures are completely different, you know. And furthermore, I think, let me also highlight that just because our bodies are built differently, it does not infringe on our ability to perform the required work. I think much like any other artist, if you get the proper training and you're allowed the, 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 the proper time to practice and to rehearse, we are all capable of achieving what it is that is required of us. So with all due respect, I think let's move away from body shaming black bodies because it is no reflection on my ability as a performer. I just look different. And also what is wrong with normalizing our bodies? That was moving, and surely it's not easy to delve that deep to tell your experiences, but we're so happy that you're brave enough. We have to go now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But the conversation does not stop here. We really want to hear from you, so hit us up on our social media platforms using the hashtag TheBlackCorner. We want to know what makes you tick. And the conversation does not end here, because we still have one more coming your way. Absolutely. If you haven't seen any of our other episodes, please make sure you watch them because we've really laid it down nicely for you. And next week, we're going to package it and finish it off for you. And that is it for me, Sibusisam Klasana. And from me, Lesokhofa Nikerk, we will see you next time. On the last episode of The Black Corner, the show must go on. What is our way forward? Have you ever had to question whether you were cast for diversity's sake? It doesn't matter what you want to be, you will just get what you get and you just have to be happy with it. We need people of colour sitting at the table. I want to see successful black directors. People are not going to always make room for you. You yeah. need to make room for yourself. Tune in to The Black Corner every Wednesday on our YouTube channel, 